Welcome to BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to follow along and see just how I made this African themed chef knife. Now this knife is made out of AEBL stainless steel. It has a full blade etching depicting an African landscape and some very unique uh, zebra stripe scales. The scale material was actually cast uh, by my friend Brad Hunt and I segmented those with some uh, African blackwood. Now the project starts on a Silhouette Cameo craft vinyl cutting machine and I use this um, the art uh, I'm sorry the software that came with the Cameo in order to lay out the artwork for this particular blade. I just made sure that none of the lines over overlapped uh, that everything was proportionate to the blade you know I, and I played with this for a good amount of time uh, to the point where both my customer and I were happy with it. The Cameo then cuts that out onto self-adhesive vinyl. I took that whole sheet of vinyl and I'm just marking where I want to place that whole sheet on the knife. Now some of my projects, if you watch the other videos, I'll take individual elements um, off the vinyl and place them on the knife. This time, because of the detail, I'm going to place the whole vinyl right onto the blade and then I'm going to weed it or pull off the sections that, that I want to have etched. The first step in the process is that be, going to be to cut along the top edge in the front and the back and also the bottom. Give me three points of reference to mark the location of that vinyl where I want to place it exactly on the blade. And then I'll use uh, clear contact paper. Now place the clear contact paper over the vinyl um, and I'll peel off the backing. So that right now the vinyl, the black vinyl has clear uh, uh, contact paper adhered to it and I'm just peeling the backing. You have to be careful because sometimes some of these little pieces will want to peel with that, with that white backing. I just use a razor knife just to make sure that they stay down. That contact paper also gives me something to kind of hold on to, and I just visually line up the top edges where I've made the, car, the uh, cuts. I can see exactly where the top edge should be, and also the bottom. And that gives me the location so that when I drop this vinyl into position or onto the blade, it's going to be placed exactly as, or as close to exact as I originally drew it. So here you get a look of the cut vinyl in place on the blade. Now I'll mask off the back of the, of the blade. I'll also mask off um, any exposed metal in the front and also on the handle. And then because this is a multi-tone etching, um, I've actually marked them in pencil. You know, the darkest areas to, uh, are, are number one to be etched. The next darkest is number two. I'll start to peel away the darker areas. So in this case, it's gonna be the outline on the rhino. as well as um, it's going to end up being the trees and, and the giraffe, some of the other animals. So any items that you remove the vinyl from, when, the, when we do the etching, those are going to get etched. And the rest is going to be left shiny. Now, you have to take into consideration that once you remove the vinyl, you're not putting it back. So you want to etch this, but with the understanding that the next layer, you're also going to con continue to etch what's already exposed. All right, so anyway, my etching plate is just a piece of, basically a piece of angle iron uh, wrapped in gauze. For stainless steel, um, I use an electrolyte solution, uh, white wine vinegar, and table salt, and it's a decent amount of salt. It's hooked up to a 12 volt battery charger automotive battery charger, uh, 12 volts set at 2 amps, the positive um, you know, has a clip that goes onto the blade and the negative goes onto the electroplate. I heat it um, for, in 30 second increments for a total of about a minute and then I cool it off in water and I repeat the process and I do that three or four times depending on how deep I want the edge to be. Um, so I'm etching in 20 to 30 second increments um, for a minute cooling it, a minute cooling it, a minute cooling it. I, 
my fear is that I don't want to overheat that self-adhesive vinyl uh, to the point where it loses its adhesion and then some of the etching solution goes underneath and that would absolutely ruin, ruin the blade. I'm just checking the heat. Uh, not a neat process, right? There's a lot of dripping going on. Note that I've got the blade suspended on a couple pieces of wood just so that it's not sitting uh, in fluid. And then once that that first layer is completely etched, I'll go back and just etch it a little bit more. Make sure that it's deep enough. Uh, then I'll go and I'll remove number two or, or the next area, the next darker area in my design. <clears throat> Now the layout and prep for the etching takes a lot longer than the actual etching itself. So now I'm just going to use uh, tweezers, you know, and or a little, a little knife, just peel off the next section. This is number two. And then I'm going to etch this for a substantially less amount of time. You know, I probably want to etch this for a total of a minute in, in 20 or 30 second increments. And the whole time I'm etching this, the original areas are also getting deeper. So electro etching is, is a really cool process. I really kind of got into it. Uh, if you're going to try it, uh, you know, I definitely wouldn't recommend as complex an etch as this for your first shot, uh, you know, do do a single tone or, or a two tone etching. I'm now going to go and remove uh, number three. These et etchings are, are becoming lighter and lighter. So this is going to be the, uh, you know, the sun or the moon, the clouds. Got some flying birds in the background. And then for this one, I'm going to use some texture. So I'm going to lay down a piece of pre soaked gauze. Uh, that gauze was soaked in the same electrolyte solution. And all it's doing is now I'm going to etch through that. But when I, when I pick up the etching plate, I'm not moving the gauze. So the etch is going to actually. Uh, retain the design or, or the, um, the texture of that particular gauze and that's what's going to add the texture into the etching especially for the uh, for the moon it gives it a really really a kind of cool look I'm going to just repeat the process now this is the next you know layer that's going to get etched So it's going to be the land mass, you know, in the background under the trees and under the giraffe, as well as the body of the rhino. And this one's probably going to be a total of about, you know, 30 or 40 seconds worth of etching. Now, when my customer contacted me about doing this, you know, I really had to give it some thought. You know, I, I came up with the design for the blade pretty easily, but you know, really was kind of struggling with what to do for the handles. But we'll finish up the we'll finish up the blade etching first. So I'm just pulling off all the vinyl now. After all of the etching is complete, I'm just going to remove all of the vinyl. You know, I clean it with a little. Uh, soap and water, and then I rub it down with a, a 400 or a 600 grit uh, paper. And that's the first time you're really going to be able to see uh, if the process worked or not. And, and this one, I was actually quite happy with.
Now we're going to talk about the handles. Um, I came up with the idea of using zebra stripes. I had no idea how to make them. Uh, so I called my go-to guy, uh, Brad Hunt, who makes uh, custom cast knife handles. And he just knocked it out of the park on this one. He came, he came back with these beautiful black and white striped, zebra striped uh, handle material. And I segmented them with some African blackwood. Um, and I glued them to, to liners. And anyway, that's what I came up with as far as the handles. I was very, very pleased you know, with the end result. Um, Brad, for a lot of my projects, I use Brad's, um, Brad's handles. He's, he just always seems to come through and he, he makes some beautiful, beautiful stuff. So I'm gonna finish these handles like I do any of my knife handles. I go back to the 2x72 grinder, uh, coarse grid belt, and I'm gonna profile uh, the scales. I've already uh, glued them and pinned them onto the blade. You know, for the inside curves, I let that uh, coarse grit belt overhang the right side of the flat platen so I can kind of get into those curves. And I'll finish all of those up on a small wheel later. Um, I actually used uh, the 2x72 and the flat platen to uh, start to round over that top edge of the handles. It's just a very quick way of, of moving the material. You have to be careful. You know, you definitely don't want to touch that that grinding belt uh, to the finished blade at all. Um, very easy to ruin a blade at this point. You have to be careful. And then I go to an oscillating sander, uh, 220 grit, then 400, 600, and then 1,000. And then I finish it off with hand sanding. And I'll hand sand uh, usually with 1,000 grit. And then I'll go to a buffing wheel. And the buffing wheel with compound um, for most of the um, cast scales, you really use a light touch. Uh, for the African Blackwood, you can go a little bit heavier. Uh, both of them polish up very, very nicely. And then I'll put a, uh, an additional coat of automotive wax on the handles. This is the finished result. So this is an African-themed chef knife made out of AEBL stainless steel. It is literally razor sharp. has a beautiful African landscape on it. Um, one-of-a-kind zebra stripe scales by Brad Hunt. A couple more views of the finished product. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, I'd, I'd ask you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I, I would absolutely love it if you uh, took the time and left a little feedback in the feedback section. Um, I'd like to give you an invite to join us on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. Uh, check out my site if you're interested in, in seeing some of my other uh, themed uh, chef knives. It's www.bergknifemaking.com. Uh, and lastly, if you're interested in learning how to make your own knives, uh, Jason Northgard and I uh, put out a book called Introduction to Knife Making, and that's available on Amazon.com. Thank you very much.